I support the fair share because uh, the money will come from the people who can afford it most and it's going to go to uh, the things that need it the most. This is something that we all as human beings should be supporting. It's about time people that have the wealth pay the fair share. This is Henry Rose. I'm a volunteer with the Berkshire Fair Share Committee. The Fair Share Amendment or ballot question one is a ballot question to voters in November and if it passes it'll help to greatly fund transportation infrastructure in our state and public education. The Fair Share Amendment is an amendment to uh, the Massachusetts state constitution. Um, it'll be question one on the ballot this November. Um, and if passed, it would add a 4% tax on the portion of a person's annual income earned over $1 million. So it would bring in an estimated one to uh, two billion a year in new revenue. So it'd be a sustainable revenue source um, that would greatly benefit our community without making uh, low and middle class people um, pay a penny more. So I support the fair share because I am committed to the future of public education. The magic key I see is um, increasing our pool of teachers. When we don't have enough teachers, it's a big stressor on the teachers who are there and the administrators, um, and that trickles down hugely to the students. Um, and what they're able to do um, in a school day. <laughs> school department, you know, every year they're coming to us, they need more money, they need to be doing more things that at one point were done by social service agencies, but now our schools are stepping in and they're providing those supports for people, um, our students who need a little bit more counseling, those who need a little bit more support. You know, I know if we talk to Commissioner Morales, we would hear about municipal bridges like the one um, on Pex Road that needs to be replaced. We would hear about our Barker Road bridge that needs to be replaced. All things that if we could get this fair share amendment passed, we would be able to better serve the public. They'd be able to move around better for those who go to those bridges, but also for the people who do need to use public transit. Because we need this revenue for investing in things like transportation and public education. And that's what this is all about. It will make our economy stronger. It will make our community stronger. It will make our state stronger. Why do you support the fair share? Well, I think it's very simple. Public higher ed in Massachusetts has always been underfunded. Before 1987, a student could go to the university if they had a, a, a minimum wage job through the summer and work study. Now, students who can't afford tuition are taking out loans. We live in one of the most unequal uh, states in the country, and the ways that you overcome that are by making sure that you invest in some of the fundamentals, like education, like transportation. Um, and so that's the first step, making sure we have the resources that we need for these critical um, investments that will make sure that opportunity um, is available for everyone. You know, over in Berkshire County, we've had several high-profile bridge closures for the past few years that have really caused a lot of you know headaches for for locals, for tourists, for for businesses that want to get their goods shipped out. You have to do these detours. You have to you know deal with that that extra travel time. So I think we can, anyone who lives in Berkshire County can see that we need more resources to get these hundred-year-old bridges up to up to snuff and and brought back up to shape. If you look at what people pay out of their household income in Massachusetts in state and local taxes. Uh, the people who are in the top 1% pay 6.8% out of that, according to the Massachusetts Budget and Policy Center. The rest of us, the 99%, pay 8.9% of their income in state and local taxes. And that's how we fund schools and how we fund roads and things like that. These are kinds of things that everybody needs. You know, they're kinds of things that are really important for economic mobility, for getting ahead. And we're underfunding them. And when we're funding them, we're funding them more out of the budgets of the people who have less money than the people who do have a lot of money. So I think it makes property tax increases less likely. For me, it's pretty straightforward. Um, our small towns do not have the equitable funds to fund everything from transportation to healthcare needs. Um, personally, as someone who has student loan debt, um, that is prohibiting me 
um, from moving forward in my life. Well, I support fair share for two reasons. One is it will enhance uh, funding for education, and the other is it will enhance spending for uh, public transportation, roads, and bridges. One of the beauties of the fair share amendment is that it is so simple. Uh, it's not going to lend itself to schemes for avoidance. It just takes whatever income you put down there as your taxable income and increases the percentage for the part over a million. Tax avoidance is a big problem. They can afford to pay expensive lawyers to reduce taxes. This is the way to pierce through that. I am totally sold on fair share. It, I, I, I'm really gung-ho and I'm excited about getting it passed uh, in November when it comes up on as ballot question number one. I'm telling everybody I know, vote yes. Um, it's going to raise $2 billion for our schools and for our crumbling roads and bridges. It's just a tax on income and only above a million dollars. You'd have to earn $17,000 a week to qualify for um, the uh, fair share tax. It's going to affect very few people and it's going to benefit everybody, including the people who pay the extra taxes.